Welcome to This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. One verse, one truth, one choice. Hello and welcome once again to This One Thing. I'm Carrie Kenyon Dern. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This One Thing. With me for this last podcast of 2021 is my dear friend, Crystal Wright. Hello, Crystal. Thanks for being here today. Yes. Hi. Happy December. I love it that it's (laughs) December. And I asked you several weeks ago if you would be willing to prayerfully meditate on easily my favorite Christmas verse with me as we move into the month of December here. And that is Isaiah 9-6. And Crystal, the reason that this verse is so powerful and so moving to me is it's actually the first verse I ever memorized. And I giggle about this. I, I really don't understand why a preschool was teaching four, you know, four-year-olds uh, verses out <laughs> of Isaiah. But the first verse I ever memorized wasn't John 3.16. It was Isaiah 9.6. And Isaiah 9.6 says, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Memorized that verse as a four-year-old child. And then life got hard, Crystal. I grew up. I went into a deep rebellion. I chose to walk away from my faith and my relationship with the Lord. And I made a lot of decisions that ultimately catapulted me into a place of utter darkness, spiritually and emotionally. And I was at a place, and this was in my 20s, where I really didn't want to live anymore. I had so much darkness, so much depression. I lost my will to live, and I had started plotting what it might look like to end my life. And through a series of encounters, and I do mean encounters with the Holy Spirit, experiencing the God who created me through his son, Jesus Christ, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus was standing in my room when I called out to him, I started to respond to him as he was pursuing me. The word of God says that nobody comes to the Father unless he draws them to himself. And there were several of these encounters. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But I do want you to understand that in the darkest point of my life, the Lord brought this verse back to me. This moment in my 20s, when I was seriously considering and thinking about ending my life, the first verse I ever learned from Isaiah 9-6 came back to me. And he said to me, Carrie, for unto you a child is born. Unto you a son has been given. And Carrie, his name is Wonderful Counselor because your brain feels like it's fracturing. Because you are hemorrhaging and you are in so much pain that you want to end your life. I am the Wonderful Counselor, Carrie, and I'm right here. And I have everything that you need mentally. Carrie, I am the Mighty God. I can heal your body. The doctors want to medicate you, but you need me to heal you. And my name is Mighty God. Why don't you ask me, Carrie, to show up in your life, not just as a wonderful counselor, but also physically as the Mighty God. Carrie, your heart is hurting and you need to experience me as a father. I'm the everlasting father. So every mental need you have, every physical need you have, every heart need that you have, that's my name. And most importantly, Carrie, you need peace. You're tormented, you're anxious, you're afraid. You need my peace and Carrie, there is no peace apart from me. It's my name. And if you want peace, you've got to come to me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. I am the answer and I am right here. And Crystal, now many, many years later, I look back on that encounter. I look back on the power of that moment where God ran after me in my bedroom in Columbus, Ohio, and revealed himself as the God of Isaiah 9-6. And I look at the world around us and the darkness and the despair and the pandemic of anxiety and fear that so many people are experiencing. And what we need this Christmas season, the greatest gift that we could experience is the promised child invading our lives as the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. And the context of this verse, Crystal, is so important. 
Because in chapter 8, the chapter right before the chapter that we're in today, in verse 11 and 12, Isaiah says this, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He has said to me, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do, and don't live in dread of what frightens them. The Lord is saying, don't think in conspiracy theories. Don't be led away by the, by the way the world thinks and processes what's going on. Don't live in fear. And then at the end of chapter eight, he talks about the darkness that's going to consume the earth, really, because people are turning away from the Lord. People are turning away from the precepts of his word. And then this beautiful chapter, the promise starts at the very beginning of chapter nine. And he says, but that darkness isn't going to last. The despair will not go on forever. The people that walk in darkness, verse two, will see a great light. Those who live in a land of darkness, a light will shine. And then that culminates us to verse six, where the promise, the child comes the light of the world, the one who will rescue us from our darkness, whether we're a kid in our 20s in Columbus, Ohio, or back 700 years before Jesus was born for God's people living in the darkness, or the darkness that you, listener, find yourself in today, he's still the same God. He's still the God of Isaiah 9-6, and he wants to run to your rescue. He wants to come to your aid. What is your need today? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Is it physical? He's saying there are resources in this world and they are good things but you've got to come to me first and the truth for me from this passage crystal is if we're going anywhere else if we're running to anything else to meet the needs of our hearts and our lives it will never work we'll never be satisfied we'll never be fulfilled we'll never have peace we'll never find healing apart from Jesus and the ultimate Christmas gift for each one of us this December is to grab a hold of this promise in Isaiah 9, 6 and say, Jesus, I need you today. I need you to be my wonderful counselor. I need you to be my mighty God, my everlasting father, my prince of peace. It was true the day that Isaiah wrote it. It was true 25 years ago in my bedroom in Columbus, Ohio and Crystal. It's true for you today. It's true for me today. It's true for every single one of our listeners So for you, Crystal, as you've been meditating on this passage in the past, I know, but specifically this past week, what's really been highlighted for you as the truth that you grab a hold of as you look at this verse? Yeah, this passage has just weighed on my heart, just the significance of it. It really feels like one of the most important Old Testament scriptures that we have because it's God just coming out absolutely clear with what his plan of salvation is going to look like. And so as I was preparing this week, and even today, more so today, the closer I got to to doing the podcast, it just, the weight of the message that we've been given, that we are to receive first, but then proclaim, has just been weighing on me today. And thank you so much for what you shared, because those were all very similar things that the Lord was reminding my heart of as well. But the other truth that I just kept coming back to is the fact that salvation has a name. We have been given the name of what our rescue plan, of what our salvation looks like. I think all analogies right now fall short, but the best one that I could think of, the one that the Lord kept giving me, is the difference between someone giving you directions. You need to get to a safe place and I'm going to give you directions. I'm going to tell you, just drive for a while, then take a turn, and then you're going to pass some things and then you're going to be there. And I feel like that's how our world is trying to find salvation and trying to be rescued. It's so vague and they don't know where to put their hope in and nothing is working. You know, there's no government that's working. There's no self-help books that are doing it. There's no health programs. Like there's nothing that's really working, but we have the hope because we have been given specifically the name, the name of salvation. And that name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4 goes back to these words spoken in Isaiah that's talking of the son that is to be born, the promised son, 
Jesus, God with us. And it's actually the passage he declares right before Jesus goes into his public ministry. Um, He goes into the wilderness and gets tempted for 40 days, prays, comes out of that, gets ready to launch his public ministry. And this is the verse that he anchors it in because this is who he is. This is his name. And so the truth that I kept coming back to is praise God that we have been told specifically where our rescue, where our help is coming from. We're not just continuing to run around in the dark without any idea, without any hope. And God loves us enough to reveal to us so clearly. There's no gray areas. This is his plan. This is how his salvation. This is how he rescues us. So beautiful, Crystal. What a powerful thing to reflect on. And what a simple thing. What a simple truth for us to grab a hold of as our sure thing this Christmas season. Thank you for that. Let's go right into the choice. What is the choice that you are committing to make, feeling the weight of this passage, feeling the importance, like you said, this this feels in this moment right now, like the most important verse in all the Old Testament. And, uh-huh. and I think that's how we should read God's word. I think that's the work of the Holy Spirit because God's word is alive. And I feel like that is part of what the Holy Spirit does as we're in God's word. We should feel that every time we're in scripture. What is the choice that you are pulling out for yourself and for all of us to make, not just this week, but all of this month as we lead up to Christmas and the new year? I think I'm going to offer up the choice that Jesus offered up. And I referenced Matthew chapter 4, but right after he quotes this verse from Isaiah, Jesus um, says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And I think that's our choice. That was the choice mm-hmm. that the Lord spoke to me. Repent. And it's not repent that I'm putting my finger accusingly in your face. It's not that picture of repentance. It's the picture of an outstretched hand saying, come, come to me. I have mm-hmm. salvation for you. I have the way to bring you out of darkness, out of slavery, out of bondage. And I can't think of a better choice than that on my own, other Mm -hmm, than to follow mm -hmm. in the steps of Jesus, to repent because his kingdom is near. And repentance may be like a first time understanding this and putting your trust in Jesus, but repentance is ongoing in our lives as Mm -hmm. believers. It's Mm -hmm. continually bringing ourselves to the Lord in those places where we're still broken, where we're still um, living in fear, where we're still living in darkness and allowing him and his loving kindness to pull us out of that, pull us into his kingdom, pull us into the light and into his truth. And I was thinking back on a woman that shared her story with me in Portland and she'd come out of a long life of addiction. And I remember her sitting in my office telling me, Crystal, I have not seen the sun in two years, the sunlight, because in her addiction, she slept all day and did drugs all night. And that was her pattern. And I can't imagine how she felt the first time she'd entered into the light with a clear and sober mind, but that's the picture, the choice that we're being given is Mm -hmm. let me rescue you. Let me pull you mm-hmm. into into the light. It's a picture of love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love what you're at, what you're asking for all of us to make as a choice because our verse of the week obviously is Isaiah nine six, but verse four of the same chapter says, "For you will break the yoke of their slavery, and you will lift the heavy burdens from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms." bloodstained by war will be burned. There will be fuel for the fire. That's right before our verse of the week. This is powerful rescue from all bondage earlier in the chapter, from all darkness. But our choice has to be repentance. And so to hold hands with your choice, I'm going to add to it. Why? Why are we repenting? We're not repenting because he wants to beat us over the head and tell us what dirty, awful scoundrels we are. What he wants is for us to receive his peace. And one of the most amazing things about the Christmas season is, you know, you see it everywhere. Peace, right? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And one of my Christmas decorations in my house is just this little sign that says peace. Peace is a word that goes with the Christmas season, even in a worldly sense. But the reality is you can't fake peace. 
you either have peace or you don't have peace. And most people have anxiety. Most people have fear. And again, like you've said several times now, our peace is found in the same name that rescues us. Our peace is found in Jesus. There's no peace apart from him. We can't manufacture peace outside of knowing the Prince of Peace. So the choice for me this Christmas season is repent. If the Holy Spirit is showing you anything that you need to surrender, surrender it because God wants you to have peace. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, for you to have peace. And then those of you who are saying, you know what, right now, I feel like there is no known sin in my life. There's nothing that God's calling me to repent, but I have anxiety. I have fear. Lay that down at the feet of Jesus. Repent of your anxiety and fear. Give that to him and receive his peace. Because this promise continues in verse 7. So right after he says, he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Get this, verse 7. His government and its peace will never end. And then the last line of this verse, verse 7, the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. He's going to give you peace. He's going to give me peace. He's the only way we can have peace. Peace, yes, comes through repentance. Peace comes in laying down anything that is occupying our hearts and our minds that is not him, whether it's our fear, our anxiety, our addiction, whatever it is. We need to lay that down and say, God, I need more of you. I want to experience you as my wonderful counselor, my mighty God, my everlasting father, my prince of peace. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. Ask the Lord, what is it that I need to repent of this Christmas season? What is it that I need to lay down, hand to you, Jesus, that I can be consumed with your peace and learn to really know you as my Prince of Peace. That is the ultimate gift that we could receive this Christmas is the gift of his peace. Crystal, do you have any final thoughts on this verse before we go into prayer? Because the kingdom of heaven is near, there's nothing that's better than that, right? Mm -hmm, Because mm -hmm. the everlasting father, because, because the wonderful counselor is near, repentance is not a burden. It's an invitation. It's truly the ticket into freedom. I think that's the heart of of, of what this passage is and um, what that word really means. Thank you, Crystal. I really appreciate you just putting it out there, making the choice so very clear. It's unmistakable. We have a choice to make. And I pray with you that we will all make that choice throughout this month and into the coming year. Dear listeners, thank you so much for joining us this past year for this one thing. We will be taking a break and we will be resuming this podcast in January of 2022. We would like to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, a very peace-filled, joy-filled celebration with your family and friends. We wish you a very happy new year. We cannot wait to meet you back here in 2022. And I'd love to pray to close this out this year. Father God, I thank you that you have given us a very clear choice from this passage tonight. I thank you for the truth that you are standing ready to be our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Whatever our need is, whatever burden we carry, whatever we need to repent of, I pray that we would lay it at your feet today that we would receive who you are, who you long to be to each of us in a very personal and intimate way, that we would be enveloped in your peace, the greatest gift that we can receive. Your peace, the ultimate gift is being yours and coming into a relationship with you. But once we belong to you, Lord, I pray that we would be committed to not living one more day apart from experiencing your peace. Father, you sent your son Jesus to die so that we could be at peace with no fear, no anxiety, that we would be able to rest in your presence. And so I pray that we would repent of whatever it is you're asking us to lay down so that we can receive your gift of peace this holiday season, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our family dynamics, regardless of any loss or pain. I pray that we would experience that you as our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace, you are more than enough 
to meet any need of our heart, of our mind, of our body, of our spirit. I thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, to this earth as a baby to grow up, to be the savior, not just of the world, but the savior who runs after each of us and rescues each of us on a very personal and intimate level, just like you rescued me 25 years ago in that bedroom all alone in Columbus, Ohio. And Lord, I pray that you would rescue many men and women that hear this podcast, that they would be reminded that you are the God who runs after us when we are too weary to run to you. And I pray, Father God, that you would take your word and you would produce much fruit for your kingdom and for your glory. And it is in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. Find all our episodes by clicking the podcast link located on our website at fetterfree.org.